straight to quarters. Run out the gun. Stand by this turbid battery. One broadside into it, if you please, Captain Bush. Pointers on target. Lint stops ready. Aye, aye, sir. Ready. Fire! <laughs> Michael Redgrave as C.S. Forrester's Indomitable Man of the Sea, Horatio Hornblower. recall many times when despair filled my heart. When first I joined the fleet as a raw midshipman and turned seasick inside a harbor. And when I was given my first command and lost it. Yet none was worse than the days when I found myself captured by the Spaniards and clapped into their prison at Ferrol. What is that you ask, Senor Hornblower? A possible exchange of prisoners? That's it. No, no, no. It is not for that reason that I have requested Senor O'Brien to bring you to my office. Oh, well, I just had hopes. You are young, Senor. Those who are young are forever hopeful. But if I cannot set you free, my young enemy, I can at least make you more comfortable, eh? More comfortable? <laughs> you are now a lieutenant. Under the articles governing treatment of prisoners, you are entitled to certain privileges. Oh, well, yes, it had slipped my mind. You shall no longer be quartered with the midshipmen... Senor O'Brien will see to it that you are transferred to the prison rooms reserved for captured officers. Well, more like cells than rooms, to my way of thinking. Perhaps so, Senor O'Brien. Yet more comfortable. Also, Senor Hornblower, you will receive the half pay of your rank. Thank you, sir. And your parole will be accepted. You will be at liberty to visit the town and the neighborhood. Thank you, sir. Understand, for only two hours each day. Yes, I understand, sir. I have your word, then, as an officer and a gentleman. You promise to make no attempt to escape? You have my word, sir. Senor, you should be more happy. So I was on parole. Two hours of freedom each day. And while it was small comfort against the fact that I was still a prisoner, I must admit that there was pleasure in it. Well, no. If it ain't, Mr. Horn, Lord... Hello, O'Brien. Look there now, across Feral Bay to the entrance. Do you see that long, wicked reef that guards the entrance? Mm. The Dientes del Diablo, the Spaniards call it. The devil's teeth. They've taken the bottom out of many a ship. Ah, there's rough weather coming. Is there no... Mm, by tomorrow or the next day, the wind's shifting. So it is. You'd rather be alone, wouldn't you, Mr. Horn, Lord? Well, since you ask me, O'Brien, yes, I would. Ah, oh, no, that's a pity. Because you're due back in prison, Mr. Hornblower. Your two hours parole is over. And that's how it went. The same deadly round. The same sick misery of captivity day after day and month after month. And the only time I felt free was during those precious hours when I stood above the harbor and watched the ocean. And then came a day when the ocean heaved up before a southwest gale, when the waves came crashing in white thunder against Dientes del Diablo, the devil's teeth. I stood there watching them. And suddenly... Senor! Senor, a ship! There is a ship, senor! 
Do you see it? Yes, senora, yes. Our captain's a fool heading this way in a gale. If he had any sense, he'd heave to and stay out to sea until the wind slackens. It is a Spanish ship, General. Oh, must be. No British captain would be so insane. The devil's teeth will tear his ship to ribbons. I'll hurry back. I'll hurry back. Carlos, what is the matter? The ship that now approaches, there is another behind it. An enemy. Por I Dios. must inform the commandant. What's that? A British ship? Si, senor. It cannot be seen from here, but from the very top of the headland. British ship? It must be a man of war. Look, there's the commandant for you. He's climbing up here now. I've got another hour of my parole. I must... I must stay here and watch. forcing him straight towards the teeth of the devil. Yes, if your captain had any sense, he'd give up and surrender. He turns. He turns towards the channel. He turns. Madre de Dios, do not miss. Port. More to port. Uh, there is the channel. He will make it. Diablo! Diablo! She's gone. A wreck. All of an instant. No, senor. No, she remains afloat. Afloat? Is it, you fool? Fast on the devil's teeth, you mean. Every mask gone from the shock and the deck swept clean. And there out to sea goes the king's ship that drove her there. Carlos, how long will it last on the rocks? How long? How long, Anharita? An hour, two hours. Look, look, another wave. Oh, they are gone. Gone. Commandant. Yes, I can see them. Two. No, no, three. <laughs> and what of it? If there were a hundred, we could do no good. There's no earthly way to get them off the teeth. Senor O'Brien is right. There is no way a boat could get through the waves from here. It would founder and sink. Yes, it would from here, sir. But look across the water there. Look at that little bay. Do you see? It, well, it's partly sheltered, and a boat might be launched from there. But, senor, we do not have a boat there. And I, Carlos, ask how we first get a boat to there, eh? How can we get a boat there without crossing the water? Oh, by land, Carlos, by land. land. Senor? Yes, yes. Commandant, a, a boat can be put up on wheels, and there must be a dray somewhere in the town, and we could hoist a boat up onto the dray, hitch up a team of horses, and go overland. And, and, and once we're at the bay, we, we, we can launch it, don't you see? It, it can be done. Senor Commandant, he's right. It is possible. It is dangerous, of extreme danger. Sir Commandant, let, let, let me command the boat. You, Senor Hornblower? Yes, let me take six fishermen with me. Men who know how to handle oars. Men like, you know, like Carlos here. See, see, I will go with you. Uh, I, 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 yes, 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 silence! Silence! Very well, Lieutenant Hornblower. This possibility of saving Spanish lives was your thought. And I cannot in all conscience deny you the chance to carry it out yourself. Remember only that I have your parole. Yes, you have my parole, sir. And I trust you will come back alive. We shall all of us pray. <laughs> that safe, solid ground upon which we'd stood and watched the Spanish schooner drive to destruction. There she lay, upon the jagged reef called Dientes del Diablo, the devil's teeth. And yet, as a handful of fishermen and I attempted to rescue the survivors, I was filled with a, a great elation to be at sea, even such a wicked sea. I'd been on shore too long. I was young, filled with such excitement that fear was driven completely out of me. Paul, that's Paul! Senor, we come closer to the reef. 
Careful, Carlos. There's a broken mast directly in our course. Aye, nombre de Dios, I see it. Pull! Pull! Senor, there are four of them. Four, not three. Observe. Yes, I see. Oh, closer, Carlos. The waves are very strong. Oh, closer. Get in the lee. Aboard the schooner. Aboard the schooner. We'll come in after the next wave. After the next wave. Do you hear me? Be here, senor. They are cutting the ropes that hold them to the mast. Ready, Carlos? Si, senor. Now, after the next wave. The wave came. And in we went through a welter of spray and foam. The survivors jumped. One of them sank like a stone, never to reappear. But the other three landed safely. We are in less danger here, senor. At least there are no rocks. Yes. As it grows dark, it becomes hard even to make out the shoreline. Uh, we'll rig the sail, Carlos. We can beat across the wind and stay clear of the reef. Si, senor. And a sea anchor, Carlos. We'll need a sea anchor. That also. Uh, senor... It will be a very long night, no? Oh, the wind may die down. Oh, as to that, always the wind dies down sooner or later, no? But until this happens... Yes, well, we're safe enough out in the open water. But it is very cold. Well, have the men lie close together. The warmth of our own bodies will keep us all alive. See, si. Senor, when the wind dies, we get back to shore, no? Well, what other course is there? I've given my parole to return, haven't I? See, si, see, si, the parole. Uh, senor, one thing more. Oh, well, now what? I... Nothing, senor. Only that you have risked your life to help these countrymen of mine. You are a good man, senor. So the night came down on us. A nightmare night, with shrieking wind and waves that rode the black water like white death. We tried to sleep. During the night, one of the survivors died. The wind died down. The waves came at us still mountain high, but smoother now, less dangerous. Senor, senor, please to wake mm. up. Pedro, Jose, amigos, uh, a ship, amigos, uh, a ship. Uh, uh, no, be careful there. Stay in the ship. Do you want us to turn, Pedro? To, to where is it? Where, Carlos? Wait, amigos, in that direction to see. Wait, the next wave. What's the matter, Carlos? What is it? It is not one of ours, senor. It is British. British? Yes, yes. We are fishermen. Our eyes are sharp. It is a British frigate. The one which forced the schooner onto the devil's teeth. <laughs> frigate? One of ours blockading the coast. One of ours. Senor, what do you do? Taking off my shirt. It's white. It's the only white shirt on the boat. Here. Put it on the masthead. Make a distress signal. No. What? We do not wish to be picked up. We are Spaniards, senor. That is the enemy. Better to wait. Now, don't be fools. Wait for what? For more cold and wind? For waves that are bound to pour over the gunwales sooner or later? But, oh, senor, you must understand. Am I in charge of this vessel or am I not? There's one man dead already and more of us nearly so. Now, make signal to her, I say. She's bound to see us. She'll pick us up. Thank heaven. A British ship. <laughs> All right, me bucko, your turn now. Up you come, over the side. Thank you. Don't even have a shirt to your back, do you? Blue as a mackerel. Don't you Spaniards have a liquor sense? Well, what ship is this? His Majesty's ship, Surtis, that's... Uh, Lamy, you speak English. Yes, I... I'm a, I'm a king's officer. No, Lamy. I want these men well cared for. Them Spaniards? Yes, well cared for. I want the dead man given decent burial. Yeah, here now. What's this ladder gagging? Get on with it. Uh, big pardon, sir. He says he's British. British? Lieutenant Hornblower, sir. Late of His Majesty's frigate indefatigable. Well, now I say. Then what are you doing in an open craft with a mob of spa I beg your pardon, Mr. Hornblower. Welcome aboard the Thirtis. As soon as you're clothed and warm, I'm... I'm certain you'll want to speak to Captain Crome. Now that 
you mentioned it, Hornblower. You're quite right. I couldn't possibly have him taken prisoner. Oh, I shall have to set him ashore at the earliest possible opportunity. Now, as regards yourself, I understand you hold a commission as lieutenant. Yes, sir. It came through when I was in prison. You were under Captain Pellew of the Indefatigable. Yes, sir. Well, I don't know if the Indefatigable is still in these waters, Hornblower. I don't think it is. But uh, you are probably still carried on their books. Oh, I believe so, sir. The Admiral of the Fleet will have to decide. But until we meet him, you can do duty aboard this ship. I can't say. You mean I... Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I was almost forgot. I... I can't do that. What's that? Well, sir, I'd, I'd welcome the opportunity. I... Well, I'd give half the years ahead of me to be out of that Spanish prison and back on duty. You're not in prison. No, sir, but I was. Oh, I see. Parole, eh? Oh, ah, well, that all is the case. Puts the decision squarely up to you. Yes, sir, it does it. Oh. Oh, I must go back, I'm afraid, sir. As soon as it's convenient for you to, to dispatch a boat. I was back the next day. It turned calm and clear... And the Certis stood in toward Farol and sent a cutter in under a white flag. I remember how all the others, Carlos and the rest, were <laughs> laughing and talking gaily as we were set down on the dock. O'Brien <laughs> was there, and half the town with him. Well, now, if it isn't young Mr. Hornblower. Hello, O'Brien. Never did we expect to see you again. Hey, not wait to see once again our homes. Hey, amigos. When we are driven out to sea, we commit ourselves to God's mercy. Yeah. 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 Carlos, yeah. Carlos, get oh. back now. Si, Carlos, si, get and get back. back. And for this, we thank the senor, no? Hey, Pedro, good to be home Carlos, again, no? Carlos. You're down in the mouth, Mr. Hornblower. Yes, perhaps I am. Ah, now, no need to tell me. The way your heart's in your eyes looking after that cutter now. And looking out beyond the devil's teeth to that British ship of yours. You're a fool. Excuse me, I'm going back to my prison quarters. Spanish prison seemed much more confining now. And there were many times when I cursed myself for coming back to them. And even the comfort I'd formerly gained from my two hours each day in the open air had lost its flavor. It was comfort no longer, not after that precious taste of freedom. I was like a man who, after having glimpsed a huge, wonderful meal, then finds himself living on only a crust of bread. This is the mood I was in when one day I was sent for by the commandant. Sit down, Lieutenant Hornblower. If you please, sit down. Yes, sir. You wonder why I sent for you, eh? You see this dispatch I hold in my hand? Yes, sir. It is a personal order for me to take immediate steps to set you at liberty. But... At, at liberty, sir? I am to restore you under a flag of truth to your fellow countrymen. Restore me? You mean... I'm being set free, sir. In recognition of... Uh, allow me to read. In recognition of his courage and self-sacrifice in saving life at the peril of his own... Oh, Commandant, I... You are overwhelmed, eh? Yes, a little. A little? Ah, you English. Senor, I... I tell you that to a Spaniard a deed such as yours makes us cry and laugh and be happy and... Senor, to be enemies is a bad thing. To be a man of honor is a good thing. Senor, I am most happy, most happy indeed. You have been set free. <clears throat> well, thank you, sir. It's something I'll, I'll remember all my life. <laughs> Yes, 
Horatio Hornblower, starring Michael Redgrave, is based on the novels by C.S. Forrester. Music composed and conducted by Sidney Torch. Produced by Harry Allen Towers. Thank you.